Hello Matrix. Welcome to the first of four pre-grade 12 sections of analytical geometry, formulae and inclination. You probably know the formulae, distance, gradient and midpoint. But can you derive them? Only when you understand the why will you be able to apply formulae effectively. And related to gradient, inclination, sometimes referred to as the angle of inclination. And the other three pre-grade 12 sections are graph concepts, equations of straight line graphs, and quadrilaterals. Let's find the distance or length of AB, where A and B on the figure here are the points x1, y1 and x2, y2. Note that AB is the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle and that this invites us to think of applying the Theorem of Pythagoras. But first, let us focus on this figure, where we have numerical values for the coordinates of A and B. And note the question marks on the figure. Pause as you enter the question values. 2 and 3, 8 and 7. And did you find that the length of AC was 6 units and realize that that was 8 minus 2 and that the length of BC was 4 units and that that was 7 minus 3? We conclude that the horizontal length AC is the difference of the X coordinates of A and B and the length of BC is the difference of the Y coordinates of A and B. We return to the original slide and we can now understand why the horizontal length AC is x2 minus x1 and the vertical length BC is y2 minus y1. Applying the theorem of Pythagoras, the square of AB therefore equals the sum of the squares of x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1 thus this formula. Therefore AB is the square root of the sum of the squares of the difference in x and the difference in the y's. Gradient plays a major role in analytical geometry so the next formula we examine is the gradient of line AB. Using the same sketch as before, we'll consider points A and B. And the gradient is BC over AC, which is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Vertical over horizontal. And this is the gradient of the line. And the angle of inclination. See the angle theta on the figure below. The tan of theta is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The very same formula that we got for the gradient of the line above, where theta is the angle of inclination of the line. Observe the corresponding angles of theta, one in the triangle and the one on the x-axis. These are corresponding angles which are equal because of the parallel lines. So, what is the angle of inclination, also sometimes referred to as just the inclination? The inclination of a line is the angle which the line makes with the positive direction of the x-axis, whereas the gradient of the line is the tan of that angle of inclination. See angles of inclination below, acute angle alpha and obtuse angle beta. The gradient of this line is positive and the gradient of this line is negative. Why is this so? In each case, the gradient M is the tan of the angle. The tan of an acute angle is positive, whereas the tan of an obtuse angle is negative. 
Now, let's examine the gradient of a line. First of all, there is a range of values. If a line increases from left to right, the gradient is positive. If it decreases from left to right, the gradient is negative. Horizontal lines have a gradient of zero, and the gradient of vertical lines is undefined. What is the gradient of these two lines, line 1 and line 2? Pause while you think about it. Do not peep at the answers. We now return to look at the answers. The gradient of line 1 is plus 3 over 2, positive, because the angle of inclination is acute. The gradient of line 2 is negative a quarter, negative, because the angle of inclination is obtuse. Parallel lines. The fact that parallel lines have equal gradients is obvious, but a tool to be remembered. Parallel lines imply equal gradients. But we could also reverse the statement because it is also true that equal gradients could imply parallel lines. And now perpendicular lines. Line 1 and line 2 are perpendicular to each other. And if the gradient of line 1 is 2 thirds, then the gradient of line 2 will be minus 3 over 2 the negative reciprocal of two-thirds. Do you know why? Give it some thought. However, the product of the gradients is plus two-thirds times minus three over two, which is minus one. And we have the important and elegant result, i.e. the product of the gradients of perpendicular lines is minus one. Lastly, collinear points. When three or more points lie on the same line, we say they are collinear. And since the points AB and C are collinear, the gradients of AB and AC are equal. Note, point A is common. Again, we have a reversible statement, and we use that symbol to say that collinear points imply equal gradients, but Equal gradients also imply collinear points. Now, some worked examples on gradient and inclination. Try these examples yourself first before looking at the answers. Worked example 1. Given the equations of two lines, find the angles of inclination. Pause while you do so. Pause while checking your answers. Remember, the gradient of the line is the tan of the angle of inclination. So, a positive gradient results in an acute angle of inclination, and a negative gradient results in an obtuse angle of inclination. Work to example 2. Given the graphs, write down the gradient and the angle of inclination of the following four lines. Pause while you observe these carefully. Pause while checking your answers and explain any similarities. Graph 1 and Graph 2 have the same positive gradient and therefore the same acute angle of inclination. Graphs 3 and 4 have the same negative gradient, minus 5 over 2, and therefore the same obtuse angle of inclination. And note that from the gradient we can calculate the angle of inclination, or also from the angle of inclination we can calculate the gradient. Again, reversible processes. The last formula. The midpoint of line segment AB. C points A and B as before, and then midpoint M. The x-coordinate of midpoint M 
lies halfway between x1 and x2, and the y-coordinate of m lies halfway between y1 and y2. Let's focus on this figure. Again, numerical values make sense. See the question marks? Pause to enter these values. It was quite easy to see that 5 was halfway between 2 and 8, and that 5 here, 2, was halfway between 3 and 7, and that therefore the coordinates of the midpoint M would be 5, 5. But also note that 5 is the average of 2 and 8. 2 plus 8 is 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 3 plus 7 is 10 divided by 2 is 5. We return to the original slide, and so now we know that not only are the coordinates of the midpoint M halfway between the coordinates of the endpoints, but they are also the averages of the coordinates of the endpoints A and B. And that is really important because it explains the plus signs here and here in the formula. The formula for the midpoint is the sum of the x-coordinates divided by 2, the sum of the y-coordinates divided by 2 because these are the averages of the coordinates of the endpoints. A common error is that minus signs are used here due to rote learning without understanding. I trust that you would have experienced what it means to know the why behind all facts and formulae and that in this module if you focus on the sketch, you can figure things out for yourself. Be inspired as you approach part two, an investigation with confidence in your thinking. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.